Simon are your driver and guide today throughout the next three hours. No. About 35 minutes. No, so don't worry, that stuff would be all day, just a little bit. But we will cover about 75% of the zoo in those 35, 40 minute time. So you get a really nice overview of the exhibit. It also helps you get an idea of where you may want to spend more time. Now there are a few areas we can drive through, no roads, so I would like to point those out. This path over here on the right hand side, if you follow it, leads you to the absolutely gate, where the orangs and the signings live together. They're the original gorilla tropics, the Nolos, the Alberts, and Treehouse restaurants. Scripps, Owens, and Wings of Australia Aviaries, which are large walk-through ones. But the birds that always uh, welcome you to the zoo, Caribbean flamingos. These are the largest and the brightest. And you know when they're born, they're not pink, they actually are gray. Flamingos get the coloring from little crustaceans that they eat, so it does actually take a while to develop the full color. Now there's a pad that just is around the bend here, you can find those flamingos. That's one of the many ways to get into the monkey trails. Beautiful double layer canopy exhibit with mandrels, manganese, uh, Over to our left side is back behind the exit sign. The zoo continues. That's where the children's zoo is. In the children's zoo, you have the petting paddock and the nurseries. You never know what's going to show up. Some of the animals though, that live in the nurseries are out during the day visiting animals of their own kind. They go back and later on the year. It's a good place to check out as you're leaving the zoo. That's reptile um, space up there on our left hand side. Kinds of lapidus tortoises, little nose crocodiles, or gharials, Komodo dragons, the white or fourth bull. When do the sea lion show goes on today? Next one will be three o'clock. At some point, check the into the cave with your map. That gives you a list of our activities and closing times. Now, I do of course have to mention the safety rules. Please don't stand on the seats or sit out the windows. Um, basically, it keeps the body parts inside the bus as you get close to trees, other buses, and of course, no cell phones. Now, I don't mind if you briefly stand on the floor of the bus to see better, but when doing that, please hold on to something because I will continuously stop and start. Okay, look to your right. Take a minute. You have to kind of focus in. Back fence, just behind the large tree, is a tiger. And it is blending in very well. Yeah. Can't see but it is sitting right there. Actually, the striping will help break up the outline of the tiger's body. And orange color. Anytime you see an animal with an orange or reddish color, chances are they're a forest dweller. They believe that color disappears in the low lights. But again, straight behind the tree. Now, this is a Malayan tiger. Originally called an Indo Chinese tiger, but through some genetic testing, they decided it was a different subspecies. Not many left in the world. Now, there used to be nine varieties of tigers, but three have already become extinct, so we really want to protect the ones that we have left. Now, my favorite way to return to the Tiger River is coming down from the bottom half of the monkey trails, because on the way you can see clouds of leopards and Malayan tapers. And of course, walking downhill is usually more enjoyable than walking uphill. This is actually pretty rare. The tigers do tend to go to the out corner of the exhibit, making it challenging for the bus to see. So this is a nice treat for us. Now, the largest of all cats is actually a Siberian tiger, much bigger than this kind, maybe 800 pounds or so. I just want to inch down a little bit so everybody's getting a peek at that tiger. Now, just after Tiger River, it goes into a Turi forest. It's our Central African mile. It's actually designed after the Congo region. We consider the layers of life and so They have big pool of water, and they all have land animals, and animals that live in the trees, like birds, stuff like that. And there's a display showing how some natives live in that part of the world. Let's see. If you look toward the back left corner, there's a little beach area. You got these big gloves up there. Those are the river hippopotamus. We have a male and female, Java and Gunani, and they've had a couple young over the years. It's actually nice to see them out of the water this time of day. They're usually inside the water because they have sensitive skin. They can sunburn and dehydrate. So their body excretes a reddish liquid. They used to think the hippos were sweating blood. It's just a natural sunblock that they'll produce. So way back in the left hand corner. Now there's another animal that just came up with a striped backside. That's called an okapi. What do you think it's related to? A giraffe. You got it. They will look a lot like a giraffe, but what they do have in common is an 18-inch long tongue. 
And it's a free handsome tongue, so it is very useful when those leaves off the tree. Long enough to clean their eyes, ears, and nose. Before they saw the Okapis, Westerners thought they were a myth, like the unicorn. They are a shy forest dwelling animal. Take one more peek at the river hippos. There's a little viewing window. But definitely come on back here so you can walk around. And the hippos will be in the water mostly throughout the day. And they are actually very graceful in the water. They eat mostly in the evening. They go grazing throughout the night. Second largest of the land animals. Now the Utari forest continues through. Variety of animals. Behind this map, we're going to look for some Allen swamp monkeys. Very open area, but it is a 20 foot jump. So that keeps them in there, but does create that open feeling. Very center tree, way up at the tippy top. There's one of them sitting there. They live there with spot neck otters to make species exhibit, which is actually more stimulating to the animals. They have more things to interact with. Now we're going to be taking a right. This road that heads off to our left, down that way, you have the lower duck pond, and you can head up the hill, goes the pool bear plunge. But I gotta say, my favorite way to get to the polar bears is taking the sky ferry right over the whole zoo. And there's also this little path here on the left that goes up to the birds of prey. And if you keep going after that, then also go up towards those polar bears. My favorite pigs are on our left hand side. These are the Red River Hogs. They're pretty attractive for swine. They have these long curly ears, a little racy stripes, and nice color. Actually, we'll find some exotic cakes from around the world here too. And across the way from them, you'll find the main entrance here to the Aturi Forest. And we're just about to enter Candy Candy. Now, I do have a favorite ask everybody as we go to Candy Candy, we like to be quiet. Um, our pandas in the quiet zone, and we are temporarily driving by them because we're rerouting for some construction. So we do ask that we just keep Kind of this animal when we go by, but I always recommend look to your left, just pass the mural sometimes when you see one up in that tree. So if you can't see one on the left, on your right will be a red hair. Okay, here we go, nice and white. So we are very proud of them. And we'll see the adult male in just a moment. 
is our little picnic area. You're welcome to laugh. And it's fine to bring food into the zoo. We do ask no glass or straws. The reason the animals do seem to like to eat the straws, so we don't have any here. Traveling up the Bear Canyon, animals will be on the left. And if we don't see it the first time, don't worry, we actually drive through twice. Okay, inside the cave you have hyenas. These are the um, spotted hyenas. They are the largest of the three varieties of hyenas. And now, who thinks they're related to the dog? Nope, not at all. They're actually in their own family. Um, they're not related to the cat either. They are very powerful dogs though. 800 pounds of pressure per square inch, so they can eat quite a bit of bone. They have a very acidic stomach, which helps digest that bone. So yeah, inside the cave, you see uh, one of the two males that are kind of taken out. And yeah, they are a social animal, the spotted hyena. So this is a very large uh, group up to that The female is in charge, the largest female of the dog. Way back there, that's Ralty. He's our dumb male. Sun Bear, he's the dad. Very proud of him. Well, he's not the right dad. <laughs> a little private moment here. <laughs> They're the smallest of the bears, though. They only average about 100 pounds. How's the family? They do consider the Sun Bear. We'll get another view of them in a little bit. And here's our ring tail lemur, that distinct striped tail. Now lemurs are primates, but not monkeys. They're fastidious, free monkeys. They're native to Madagascar. Across the way from them, you have some angle-link hollowists with that black and white fur. And then the cutest animal that's the zoo, our grizzly cub. Oh, they're a little over a year old, maybe a year and a half old now. Grizzlies are a type of brown bear. They do uh, reside here in the lower 48 states. No longer here in California, though. Their brothers, Montana and Scout, of their name. I can't tell them apart yet. You will see them uh, wrestling around throughout the day. Lots of fun to watch. They also have the Alaskan brown bears, which of course, live up in Alaska, and then the Kodiak bear, the largest of all the brown bears. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of brown bears around the world. They are omnivores, so they do have quite a variety in their diet. Lots of fruits and vegetables, so they do little omnivore biscuits, meat, fish. You see some leftover uh, kale over here for them.
this is the first place outside of the Philippines to have the warty pig. You can see some of those young ones in the back there. The little ones are really quick. As they get older, the males, they get this mohawk. Another animal that was actually once got to be extinct are these purple wallabies. They're against the back wall, you'll see a couple of them. They've been found a population on an island near Australia. Small marsupials. And just like the kangaroos, they will have the pouches. Just females that have pouches, though, they're the ones that carry the joeys. The joeys, but you can pull any other marsupial. We do have some tree kangaroos. The second exhibit in, you'll see some uh, auburn colored fur. Unlike the wallabies, these guys will spend most of their time up in a tree. 80% of their life or so. And I'm sure you're familiar with this animal. Camel. These are the Bactrian camels, the two pump. What's in a camel pump? Fat. Fat, you got it. That way if there's a food shortage, they can reabsorb some of that fat tissue. Now they do store water, it's just within their entire body. And the one hump camel is called the uh, dromedary. And they do have some relatives next door. They're Wanako, they look just like a llama. They actually believe llama. Oh, there you go, we just popped up. <laughs> That's their cue. <laughs> they actually bred llamas from Wanako about 6,000 years ago. Wanako are a little smaller, more shy. So when you do visit them, be very polite because they also have the ability, like a camel, to spit. <laughs> And you know? in the design of this exhibit, they can never get you. They actually have a split upper. Nope. <laughs> Next door, we have a nice aloe garden. You'll see some stuff coming into bloom this time of year. 